a bit of a surprise to me. It's all about just trying to split a couple from the group, one or two. This is how I'm catching my calvus fry. Let's see if we can see this guy come out of the net. There we go. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be continuing on from last week's video where I was showing you guys I was moving around all the cichlids in the fish room to make room for some new calvus fry. In this week's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I prepare their fry tank, their grow out tank, and what I do to catch the fry and how I do that. So let's get into this week's video. So it's been 24 hours since I put the calvus in the aquarium. You can see these guys are pretty much in the exact same spot and are still spoggling, which is a bit of a surprise to me. Look at this area. If you look at the back there, you can see two calvus, a very small one, and a very large one, looking like they're a pair, sitting next to each other quite happily and not squabbling. So potentially uh, they might be a mated pair, I'm not sure. I'm actually surprised these guys are still squabbling, and fighting with each other. But yeah, I thought things would settle down by now, 24 hours later. But uh, they definitely have for the two guys at the back. <laughs> but uh, these guys at the front, still sorting out their differences. This is the White Alto Lampologus Calvus breeding pair tank. And from past experience, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna start to see fry coming out of this shell in mass from about tomorrow onwards. Uh, you can't really see on camera. Oh, actually you probably can. Just in that little hole, some fry swimming around. So, in the shell, the fry are there. Free swimming in the shell. I have been feeding this tank for the last two or three days. And generally when I start to see fry in the shell swimming around, it's another about four days until I see the fry exiting the shell. And in fact, I have found one fry so far on the sand bed and I've lost him now <laughs> they are so well camouflaged basically all you're seeing is two little eyeballs staring back at you uh, on this sand bed there's this there he is they're so well camouflaged there we go so it's the very first fry I'm gonna move it into its tank so I'm gonna catch it out now and it will be the first one to be placed in its brand new grow out tank so yeah, pretty much four or five days after I see the first free swimming in the parent shell. Uh, four or five days later, they're out and uh, they exit the shell and um, it's when I start to catch them and move them into their grow out tank. Okay guys, so it is the next day and there are a load of fry in this corner here. So like I expected, fry are starting to exit their parent shell. So I'm going to have to start catching them out and popping them into their grow out tank. Now for some reason I've been pretty lucky with six out of the seven spawns the fry when they exit the parent shell end up in this corner. Some do end up halfway up the back of the tank but hardly ever end up in that back corner thankfully or that corner over there it would be a nightmare trying to get the fry out of the tank um, I have looked around and there is no fry up there they always seem to be at the front of the aquarium I don't know what it is in their instinct uh, you would think that they would go for rock cover uh, in the wild however for some reason these guys seem to uh, move towards the open space uh, and away from rock cover so not something I would have expected with fry. I would have expected them, like I said, to find cover and shelter and hide in, the, in amongst the rock crevices. Uh, but thankfully they don't do that. That makes my job a whole lot easier to catch them out of the aquarium and to pop them into their grow out tank. So there would be heaps more fry in the shell. Uh, I've just turned the lights on in this aquarium. So uh, if there are fry in the shell, they would have stopped swimming around and uh, their mother's gone into the shell there and um, just protecting them but yeah um, their, their general behavior is uh, they pretty much usher the fry away from their shell and they no longer uh, fend for them once they get the shell so i'm going to start catching these guys now and popping them in 
they grow out tank, which is up here. And yesterday I actually caught one fry. So there is already one white calvus fry in this aquarium. And the rest of these brothers, or her brothers and sisters, are in this tank. And I'm expecting at least 60, uh, a max of about 90. Because that's about the range of fry that I've caught out with the six previous spawns from these guys. But we'll see how we go. So I've caught 23 fry out of the aquarium. They were all basically in this corner. There were some just around here. And I ushered them down with the net, slowly, slowly, very patiently, just slowly bringing them down towards this corner of the tank and then scooping them out. The most I ever caught at one time was three. And uh, generally I was catching one at a time. Now the other thing I do recommend you do if uh, you want to breed calvus or any fish really for that matter, is have the grow out tanks nearby. So I'm basically going from here on my little step ladder, from here to their tank right there. And because this entire system is connected up to a sump system, all 20 tanks have exact same water parameters, I have no problems moving fry around from one tank to another. And that is a big benefit of having the tanks connected up. All the, all the water parameters are exactly the same. I don't have to worry about different water parameters. And I can just basically scoop the fry straight out, pop them in the grout tank. No need for uh, acclimating. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's as stress-free as I can get it. Scoop them out of the net, pop them straight into the tank. But all, the other thing I also do when I put the fry in their grow out tank, and I'll quickly show you some of the fry in here, and you'll be able to see these little dark objects on the sand bed. If the camera focuses, there's some fry. Okay, I let them swim out of the net. I make sure the net is open and I let them swim out in their own time. You have to be very patient. These guys are pretty delicate and uh, it's a pretty traumatic experience. They've just left their parent shell and I'm um, scooping them up with a net. They don't know what it is. They're trying to swim away from it with all the energy that they've got, which isn't much. Uh, I have been feeding the tank baby brine shrimp and live microworms for the past three or four days. And uh, so, you know, once they have uh, absorbed their yolk sac, they've been eating that. Uh, and I've been hoping some of the, the, the food I put in the aquarium ends up in the shell. Uh, I highly recommend you use a syringe or turkey baster and inject food near the shell. So it does go into the shell for these guys to feed off. Because once they, they absorb that yolk sac, you need to start feeding them. And they won't exit that shell until they're free swimming so they've got a couple of days without uh, their yolk sac so uh, I really recommend you do start feeding uh, your calvus fry or Altel Empologus compressorceps fry a couple of days before they do exit the shell just to make sure they're getting some food because again this is a traumatic experience for them see, yeah, they're using all their energy to try and swim away from the net I'm scooping them out and then popping them into this aquarium and now you can see they're just sit, sitting on the bottom of the tank and they're just resting there and they'll do this for weeks now, for months. They'll pop up out of the, out of, off the bottom of the tank into the water column to feed, but then they'll just go right back to the bottom of the tank. And they do this for months. And again, that's why I stress to you guys so often to keep the bottom of the tank clean if you intend to breed calvus or compressor seps. So that's my recommendation. So I've caught 23 so far. There's no more that I can see on the sand bed. Uh, there probably is some, but they're so well camouflaged against this pool filter sand. Uh, they're extremely difficult to see. I'm only really ever seeing them if I just happen to uh, make direct contact with one uh, and see their eyes. Uh, but other than that, it's all about movement. I should point out the next thing that I do, once I've caught all the fry that I believe I can see for the day, uh, I might one or two might pop out in the next few hours before I turn the lights off. Uh, it doesn't matter and I'll leave them in the tank. Uh, I know the parents, their instinct at the moment is still to protect the fry and attack me not to eat their fry. So that's good. The fry will be fine for a night or two in the aquarium with the parents. So I am comfortable with that now. But So what I do now, once I've caught all the fry that I can see out of the aquarium, I feed the aquarium. I feed them live microworms or live baby brine shrimp. Something that can really draw the fish's attention so they can eat it. Movement is a thing that really draws fish attention and uh, for, for the fry, because I really want them to get to start to feeding now, I'm feeding them live foods. So I fed this tank now with the intention of 
Michael Williams going into the parent shell where the female is right now. And I've also put my uh, baby micro worms in the grow out tank. So these guys, they're still resting. You might see occasionally one pop up off the ground uh, eating some micro worms that's sweeping past. Uh, but yeah, they're still getting used to being put in this tank. Micro worms will stay live in the water column for a few hours, provided they don't get sucked up in the bulkhead and go down to the sump. Uh, but in that time, there are thousands of microworms in this aquarium, and there's only 24 <laughs> white Altel Epilogus calvus fry in here, so I'll have a feast. So, perfect food for them. It attracts their attention, the little wiggling worm really attracts the fry's attention and uh, encourages them to eat. The other thing I'll just point out quickly is I don't put lids on the fry grow out tanks uh, when they're this young. Basically, the clinking off the lid coming off and on all the time can really stress these guys out. So I really recommend you don't keep lids on your fry grow out tanks for a number of months. Once they get to about this size, put the lid back on. They will jump out uh, because they do chase each other around the aquarium. Once they're this big, they can uh, jump out of a height of about an inch. So I really do recommend you cover them at that point. But by this stage in their life, they're a lot more hardier and they're not as skittish as uh, your younger fry would be. Uh, not as fragile, I should say. And the clinking of the glass will kill them. That's what I believe anyway. Uh, that's what I've experienced with my past spawns. And uh, ever since I've left the lid off the aquarium and uh, no light, just ambient light from the room, really close to 100% survival rate, 100% success rate with these guys now. So. Finally got uh, the, the process down pat for raising calvus fry successfully in large numbers. No lid, no light, clean bottom tank, and uh, good quality food, and you'll be right. And great water, obviously. <laughs> very, very stable water parameters are key for these guys. So it's the next day, guys. And have a look at how much fry I've exited the shell now. So I've got a busy day ahead of me, catching all these and popping them in their grow out tank up there. So yesterday I caught 24 and I'm expecting that these will be pretty much the rest of the guys. Um, again, I'm so lucky that they just all accumulate at the front of the tank. Generally at that corner, uh, every spawn has uh, pretty much been at the front. One spawn was that I had a lot of fry at the back corner, but out of the seven spawns I've had, six have been at the front corners of the tank, and the majority of those have been in this corner. Again, not sure why all the fry like to come to this corner here. I don't think the Calvus parents are ushering them away to this point, um, although they could be, but I've never seen that behavior. So it makes my life a whole lot easier to catch these guys out. Anyway, I'm going to get cracking and catch them out, put them in their grow-out tank and give them a good feed. So I've caught 55 fry out so far and you can see there's heaps still in this aquarium. I'm going to really try and show you carefully on camera how I'm kind of dividing some of the fry from the group. This is really difficult to do, keep it in frame and uh, net them out. You can see I'm trying to Scoop them into the net. Now, that little guy's in the net. You can see, that's 56. Next thing I do is put the net in gently and let the little guy swim out. There you go. So it's all about dividing them from the group, slowly, slowly, not scattering the group about because it's great that they're in one uh, condensed little area. It's all about just trying to split a couple from the group, one or two. Uh, the max I've caught in one go is three. Uh, you really want to be careful when you're catching these guys that you don't squash them with the net, obviously. Uh, they're very hard to see on this pool filter sand. So I'm just being gentle, going slowly. Now there's actually two here, and it's very easy to squash one of these guys, so 
I'm either going to catch one or both, try and usher them into the net, and you can see how slow I go. So one's just gone, doesn't matter, I'll just catch this little guy here, usher him into the net. The net was folded over on itself, so I tried to open it up a little bit. So he's there. There you go. So he's gone into the net now. See, I'm not forcing him into the net. I'm just kind of ushering him in slowly, slowly. So it's 57. Pop him in your tank. I let them swim out. You would have saw he just swam out just at the bottom there. Just let them swim out. Try not to stress them out by trying to get them out of the net. So there's one guy here, there. So be very careful not to squash them. And that's why it's best to do them one at a time if you can, or just a handful at a time. Uh, just so you know where all of the fry are. When you rest the net on the sand, you're not going to pinch any of them. So that one's gone in the net. Oh, that come out. Sorry guys, it's very hard to do on camera. Making sure the camera's on the target and catching the fish at the same time. So that's 58. This is basically what I'm doing. This is how I'm catching my calvus fry. Let's see if we can see this guy come out of the net. There we go. That's all there is to it. So that's 58. Anyway, I'm going to continue catching these guys. Uh, the most I've caught at one time is three. Uh, and that's just from a lucky scoop, really. So try not to catch too many in one, one go because you have a higher chance of not seeing where all the fry are and potentially squashing one of them against the glass or the sand bed, which you really don't want to do. Um, I've never done that because I've taken my time with it. But it would be easy to do if you tried to rush this. The other thing I've been thinking about is why they all congregate here. Obviously it's safety in numbers. One fry sees another fry and they go and follow each other and they group together. So that's potentially why they uh, that's why they group together. But as to why they group in this area, pretty much with every of every spawn of the seven I've had, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's just a lucky coincidence, a very lucky, very happy coincidence. Anyway, I'll get, keep cracking on with this and catch all these guys out. Okay guys, so I've caught 108 white calvus fry out of the aquarium. Can't believe it. That is the largest amount of fry the white Altonio Belotus calvus pair have had for me uh, by about 10. <laughs> Normally, uh, the, usually the highest is around the 90 mark, uh, but this time 108 fry. Uh, there could still be some fry in the tank, uh, but this is the amount I've caught out so far. Uh, so there's a load in here now. Really glad about that. Uh, nice to see that the spawn sizes are increasing as the female grows larger and more mature, as you would expect. Now, like I said, and you saw, all the fry were in this corner. They're all gone, they're all in the tank, in their grow out tank. Now, what I do is I do a kind of methodical sweep of the aquarium with the net, just slowly going from side to side uh, and then at the back to the back of the aquarium. So I'll do this just slowly, slowly, just to see if there's any more fish. And if I notice movement on the sand bed, uh, because that's pretty much the only way you're seeing these guys is, is by them trying to swim away from the net. That's how you'll get there, uh, you'll, they'll attract your attention. Just methodically sweeping the bottom of the tank slowly, slowly, and seeing if anything moves. If anything moves, it's obviously most likely some fry. And uh, that's how I do my last check to see if I've caught all of them. So I'll just do this methodically, getting swooping into the corners and then going uh, a net length back and then doing the same thing, kind of combing over the sand bed just to see if anything is moving uh, that I can't see that's uh, stationary in the tank. And then yeah, just a methodical sweep of the sand bed. And if I see something move, obviously it's going to be more than likely fry. Uh, but that's what I do right at the end, just to make sure I've caught everything out that I can uh, possibly catch right now. But again, there might be fry in that shell. Uh, I, I doubt it. That is, like I said, I've caught the, that's the largest amount of fry that I've caught out of this uh, breeding pair, from this breeding pair. So more than likely going to be it for the fry in this aquarium, 108. Uh, but there might be a sprinkling of some left in the tank. 
we'll check in a few more hours after uh, you know the, the fry if there is fry in that shell they'll come out in the next few hours the last remaining ones and I'll catch them out and hopefully they'll again come to the final tank but I'm pretty sure uh, that's pretty much it uh, with 108 being their largest spawn to date so I'm not expecting many more fry if any to come out of that shell but there you go guys caught uh, all, them out, all of them out for now so what I'm going to do now with uh, this grout tank is feed it some live microworms live microworms will be wiggling uh, will really attract the attention of this uh, fry and the fry will get a pretty good feed off that now so I've just put some live microworms in the tank and you'll start to see the fry hop off the bottom of the tank and eat the microworms as they uh, drift past. Give these guys a good feed now after their little ordeal. And, uh, yeah, they should be eating now, as you can see, doing fine. There you go. And guys, again, I don't put the lights on these aquariums. Uh, well, these guys are fry and growing up for a number of months. The ambient light in the room is more than enough for these guys uh, to get a day-night cycle. Having the light on, uh, turning the light on every day, on and off, uh, can stress these guys out because they are quite delicate. So I don't even have a lid on this aquarium. These guys aren't going to be jumping out of there. No chance. Uh, take a few months for them to put on some size, uh, and that f for 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 them to be able to jump out of there. And then that once they that once they're large enough to jump out of the aquarium, it's fine to put a glass lid on. Clink clinking of the glass lid can stress them out as well. So I just don't have a glass lid on them. It's one way less to stress them out by clinking the glass. If you have the glass lid, it's going to stress them out. So just don't just don't put it on. There's no absolutely no need other than to stop evaporation. Uh, if you really want to put something on there, you can put some cling wrap, uh, but even then I still wouldn't worry about it. Uh, yeah, the amount of water change you'll be doing on these guys will really negate that need. Uh, and yeah, the, no light, just, just don't, you don't really don't need uh, an aquarium light on them. Just try to uh, avoid stressing them out as much as possible. And you will get close to 100% survival rate, success rate with your fry. Your Alto Lampolotus calvus or your Alto Lampolotus compressiceps. Another thing, again, Stress it all the time to you guys. Keep the bottom of the tank clean because they will just sit there like that for months, even though they are free soon. The other thing I've done, I fed these guys, obviously. These are the ones I've just caught, 108 of them. I've also fed the main tank, the parents tank, just in case there are fry still in this aquarium. There's now live microworms in here too. And uh, if there are any fry in here, they'll be able to have a feed as well. So just doubling up, just making sure everyone's getting a bit of food today. So there you go. I'll wait a couple hours now, check again on this tank in a few more hours and see if there's any more fry in the tank. And uh, that's really about it. So there you go guys, a bit of a longer video this week, but I really hope you found it informative and useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.